Hello everybody, uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is uh, having a great week. Uh, we are midway uh, through the week. Hope everything is moving as planned. And I know that that's not always the case. And, and, and in that instance, just understand that you're simply moving as a part of the process and that if you consistently remain focused and you consistently push through that you can accomplish some unbelievable things no matter what it is you desire to be um, I am here to uh, reiterate a point that I make quite often and um, if you're not really truly passionate about what uh, needs to take place in the black community you probably will grow tired of my points because it seems redundant but redundancy is a necessary practice when the point isn't being received at a level that uh, promotes activity action and movement we like to talk about things when they're hot topics we like to talk about things uh, when uh, there's a you know a subject and you know with um, uh, young Dolph being uh, murdered in Memphis today oh everybody will be talking about it there'll be all these posts about we've got to do better and everybody will want to talk about it and everybody will want to get into it but we won't really stay with it long enough because we're emotionally driven we are people who like sensationalism we want to talk about what's hot and 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 we don't have the emotional endurance because emotions don't really have endurance endurance comes from a level of commitment a level of passion a level of understanding that changes habitual behavior habitual thinking patterns and it it causes you to behave differently it is in essence a change in paradigms or a shift in paradigms that pushes us in a new direction so no uh we can talk about how we end up here all the time and i do i talk about the importance of socializing young men see long before we saw another high profile murder like the one that took place today where literally you can go on youtube and see uh the the uh, any number of live videos posted of the immediate aftermath while this young brother's body probably isn't even cold yet uh, laying out there uh, well laying inside this uh, bakery or this cookie shop or whatever it was and who knows what it was and the crazy thing about this is there's a picture of this brother uh with his wife and two kids. That is like one of my favorite pictures. I didn't even know who he is. I'm not, I don't keep up with a lot of these young cats cause uh, I'm an old school hip hop head and, and I'm just not impressed. And I don't know any of his music, I'll be honest with you. But that picture of a young brother with a be beautiful Nubian uh, at his side and his, his, his babies are sitting there. Um, that 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 caught my attention and it actually became one of my favorite pictures and I saved it and come to find out that this is the brother who lost his life today um, it's crazy to me but long before this happened I've been talking about the importance of engaging our young men before they get to the point where violence is always the outcome violence is the response to every disagreement I remember uh, after the death of, well, I don't remember, I wasn't born yet, but I remember, you know, seeing videos uh, of documentaries, and it may have even been at the end of uh, the uh, autobiography of Malcolm X. It may, uh, may have been at the end of uh, Spike Lee's movie, but I remember seeing documentaries after the murder of. Uh, Malcolm, which is interesting because right now on tomorrow, two people who were initially uh, convicted of participating in his murder 
are going to be exonerated. One who is 80 plus years old, the other one passed away in 2009. But they're going to be exonerated because there's proof that they were wrongfully convicted. It's kind of weird all this is happening in the same uh, same time frame. But uh, I remember uh, seeing a clip with Dr. King saying that we've got to learn how to be disagreeable without being violently disagreeable. And, 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 and here we are where violence is the natural response of the young. And it comes from a lot of different places. I've talked often about the fact that our boys are literally primed for violence. And then the image is given that it's because it's inherently in them. No, they are primed for violence through their environment. They're primed for violence because they have a lack of purpose and identity. They're primed for violence because they're squeezed within the walls of poverty uh, and the lack of access. And so they start to fight for what they feel they need and deserve without understanding what they're fighting for. And so they start to respond with what they have and that's physical force. And they don't realize that their anger is pointed at the wrong thing. And it's because of a lack of socialization. It's because of a lack of engagement. And, and the thing is, like I said, I've been talking about this and I deal with this on a regular basis. I literally just got off the phone with a mother about a son and the things that they're going through. And I'm not gonna speak with any specificity because people may be familiar with their situation. But I just, I mean, literally got off the phone and it just prompted me to sit up and have this conversation about where we are at right now. And the mother said to me, doctor, say, Dr. Wallace, this goes exactly to what you talk about a proper socialization, because if he'd have been properly socialized, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And the truth of the matter is, if he would properly socialize, uh, the data and the statistics show me that more than likely he would be performing at a different level, doing a different thing, and we wouldn't have this discussion. But nevertheless, he still uh, redeemable. He's still a person who needs somebody to care about where he's at so that he can get from where he's at to where he should be. And it's hard because nobody cares. You know, you go out, you end up doing things because you feel nobody cares. Then when you do the thing, nobody really cares. And now you don't know how to deal with the thing. And so now you double down on being the only thing you know how to be. And that puts you in a deeper situation. Then you just simply become a part of a vicious cycle that never allows you to step into who you're going to be. Let me tell you something. Nobody steps into greatness alone. Nobody steps into the fullness of their potential alone. If without the modeling of manhood, without a map and a blueprint of what it takes to become a man, the chance of doing so without any help is astronomically against it you know I, I hate to see men who talk about self-made I'm a self-made man I'm a, no maybe you didn't have a dad maybe you didn't have men in the home maybe there weren't any power positive powerful men in the family but somebody influenced you somebody inspired you somebody spoke into your life somebody laid a blueprint that you followed you didn't get there solely by yourself that's not how life works you know and there are some, which, which, which is a sad situation, there are some of us who got there because men who didn't look like us took an interest in us. Whatever the motive may have been, they are the ones that stepped in and said, hey, look, let me help them. Hey, look, don't do it that way. Hey, look, you're about to blow everything in your life completely up. Don't do it. That's sad. That's sad if, when that's the case. So what am I saying? I'm saying that the redundancy of my message when it comes to young black men is out of necessity. It's because it can't be a one-off engagement. It can't be a one-off conversation. It can't be a one-off point because too much is riding on the rescue of the black male. And when I say rescue, I mean rescuing them from 
themselves, rescuing them from the traps of the hood, rescuing them from an erroneous idea of what manhood really is, and actually showing them what they're capable of, and showing them what their responsibilities are, and training them to walk into their manhood. That is absolutely, positively, unequivocally going to have to be the point. And if we can't get that, we don't stand a chance in hell of black liberation. We don't stand a chance in hell of t doing all this stuff. We talk, we get taught black group economics till we black, I mean, till we blow in the face, and nothing's going to change overall for us until we get our men aligned, until we get our women in a place where they are walking in the fullness of where they are. But what I'm talking about now is we look at this kid uh, who. Uh, from what I gather was a good kid. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing some stuff from people who I respect that are saying that, you know, of course you get, you know, he had beef with different rappers and, you know, he's been in a couple situations where he's been shot at. And here's another thing that, that there's this idea of being true to the game, an idea of loyalty. Uh, one of the things that I remember as a young kid who was athletic and had a head on my shoulders that wasn't normal. You're talking about a kid who read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica book by the age 10, who just happened to be physically gifted. And so I had options. And what I can tell you is that the OGs in the hood kept an eye on me in two ways. Number one is they stayed on top of me to make sure I didn't do stupid stuff because I had a temper, I had a proclivity towards acting violent. And they would be on top of me, but they also made me off limits. And the idea was this kid is special. He can do things outside of being this hood and we don't want him here. And then I was told, don't come back. Do not come back except to visit your parents. I don't wanna see you on the block. I don't wanna see you hanging. Do not be in places where people can see you and all of a sudden feel the rage they feel because you made it. Because there are people who will kill you just because you made it. There are people who will take small little infractions and disagreements and use them as a reason to end you. And you cannot be caught hanging out here. And while I have done a bunch of work in my community, I've done it at a distance. And when I have been present at some of the stuff that was done, I was heavily guarded. And, and this is in my younger days, I was heavily guarded. Why? Because at that time there were people around there that probably you know, looked at me and thought, I thought I was better than them when I didn't. I loved everybody in that community. That community gave a lot to me in a lot of different ways that made me who I am. But everybody doesn't see that because there are people who weren't socialized. I was socialized with a man that was a man that was a man in my house. So it was just stuff I wasn't allowed to do. It was the stuff that could have been known, you know, but even then, now that I think about it, the one thing that I could actually get away with with my, my great-grandfather was violence. It was the code. It was like, you know, if I couldn't get in trouble at school for anything else but fighting, if, if I didn't start it and I was defending myself, I could go to the hilt and it wasn't going to be a problem. And I believe you do need to be able to defend yourself. And so I didn't make it a habit of starting things, but I did make it a habit of finishing them and finishing them delightfully. And I had to grow out of that because one day you're going to run into something you can't finish. And I thank God that I did. But let me tell you something. We are losing young black males at a rate. We're not just losing them to prison. We're losing them to themselves. You know, at a time when this kid seems to have had some success at a level that providing him the means to be in a different space. And I get it. We should be in a place where you can literally advance yourself and enhance your community and remain in your community. And one day I hope we get to that point so we're not feeling like in order to be 
our best we need to be amongst them and you know who them is I, I would like to see a point in time where we can enhance ourselves and be within the community but it's real difficult to do that when people see you as a come up when people will rob you because they see you as a come up people you know will rob you set you up out of desperation you'd be surprised at what people do so you know I hate to hear what happened to this young brother I hate to uh, you know think about it but I've been talking about this for years uh, black men black man lead is going on 10 years since I created that rite of passage program and I've been talking about it probably three or four years before that the research is probably 20 years in in the making this isn't new to me I've been talking about I've, I set out to understand African American and uh, young adult I mean black African American and uh, adolescent and young adult male violence I set out to come up with a solution because it was wreaking havoc in our community. It was making our communities completely unsafe. It, I grew up in the 80s where the height of gang violence was, was moving across the United States and uh, into the 90s where it reached its apex. And now it's still a problem. And you got black males killing each other over territories they don't even own. You got black males killing each other over verbal altercations and disagreements. It's on us to do something about it. Outside of go, oh my God, or that's a shame, or, uh, you know, shaking my head. You know, the response is, don't shake your head. What are you going to do about it? Don't go, oh my God, it's on you. It's gonna be on us whether or not we come out of this, whether we are able to uh, revive the idea of community. A neighborhood isn't automatically a community. We need to understand that. We need to understand that a neighborhood isn't automatically a community. There are some things that make a community. Collective understanding. Uh, codes of conduct uh, uh, a village concept where everybody matters you know we really have a lot of uh, growth and evolution I mean evolution uh, that is required before we can really truly become what we need to become to really truly talk about uh, empowerment and, and liberation and all this stuff we love to talk about. You know, you can have all these pictures of what uh, ancient Kemet looks like. You can have all these pictures of the Nile civilization. You can show all these beautiful pictures of some of the beautiful places in Africa and make your connection to them and that's great. It has its place. But you can have a lot of different things, but if you don't rescue yourself from yourself, if you don't develop a level of self-awareness, a level of self-love, you'll never be able to see the value in other people who look like you, other people who come from the place you come from. When you hate yourself, you hate anything that reminds you of yourself, and you see the thing you hate in other people who look like you, and it's nothing for you to destroy. That thing you hate. It's, if you can't value your life enough to protect your life enough to get yourself out of harm's way, you have no problem harming someone else. We've got to understand the depth of this thing. We've got to understand the causes. I've talked to you over and over again about the things that are the catalyst behind African, African American adolescent and young adult male violence. This is just another reminder. Look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. I just had to talk about this. Don't forget to show your love and show your support for the work we do by going to the description box and uh, clicking the link to give or giving through our organization's cash app account. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable.